Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar doing more with less. My name is Jenny Kinter and I am an associate marketing manager at General Mills and will be your host for the webinar today. This webinar is sponsored by General Mills Food Service, providing the food people love away from home. We are proud to offer the quality products food service professionals rely on for consistent results in their own operations, as well as the beloved brands their customers know and trust. Today's webinar is supported by General Mills Bell Institute of Health and Nutrition. The Bell Institute is the company's internal source for scientific health and nutrition expertise. Before we begin today's program, I'd like to cover a few housekeeping reminders. Today's webinar will be recorded with a Q&A session at the end. However, you may submit questions at any time during the webinar by clicking the Q&A icon in the upper right-hand corner of your screen. After the webinar concludes, you will receive an email with links to the slides and continuing education credit certificates in the coming days. With that, it is my pleasure to introduce our presenters today. Chef Sonia Kerr has an associate degree in culinary arts from the University of Toledo and a bachelor's degree in culinary management from the Arts Institute International of Minnesota. She has also completed the cook's apprenticeship with the American Culinary Federation. Since joining the Chefs of the Mills in 2006, Chef Sonia has focused on troubleshooting recipes and product performance, reverse engin engineering products, developing and standardizing recipes, mapping flavor combinations, maximizing ingredients, and menu engineering. Next, Chef Jesse Kordowski has an associate degree in culinary arts from the Arts Institute International Minnesota and a bachelor's degree in advertising from the University of Minnesota Twin Cities. Before joining Chefs of the Mills in 2015, Chef Jesse spent time in product development, working on new and established products for General Mills. Her experience prior to joining General Mills includes leading menu development for corporate airline food service and catering management, and working back of house in catering, independent, and corporate casual restaurant food service settings. And finally, a native of Belgium, Chef Gilles Stassart studied culinary arts and hotel restaurant management at EHPN, a hotel management school, and was chosen to be part of an international program from Hilton to further develop the skills of executive chefs from around the world. Chef Gilles has worked at Michelin recognized, re recognized restaurants and hotels in Belgium, spent time in prestigious clubs and hotels in Minnesota, and was an executive chef for a large network of healthcare facilities with Sodexo before joining Chefs of the Mills in 2013. With that, let's begin our presentation. I hope you all enjoy. Well, we wanna talk about how we can also help you save on labor, save on time, and then if you have any menu substitutions, basically helping you with labor is going to go ahead and um, you know manage <laughs> your inventory. So let's go ahead and go on to the next slide, please. So as we think about labor shortages in the market, uh, this time last year in food service, you know, only a quarter percent of the decision makers thought that, you know, the labor shortages were going to be resolved. And, you know, here we are and still 75 percent of us are having difficulty getting all of our shifts met. So when you think about that, um, you know, how do we get people in the door and then even more importantly how do we keep them but you know so as operators where are we most concerned so in a recent data essential survey basically people are obviously talking about rising food costs um, that includes cost of delivery inflation you know that's for all the other things that we need in our budget the cost of rising labor you know we can't really pay minimum wage anymore um, and keep people because you know our staff can go down the street and make more money um, and then, you know, even thinking about um, sourcing issues, you know, we, we know we've had supply chain issues and, you know, for everyone, including ourselves. So basically, you know, when we do have shortages and we have labor shortages, um, you know, some of the solutions that have come up are, you know, frequently the managers have to cover the shift. So it's just one more thing we need to add in our day. And then we still have to figure out how to do our paperwork and all our other duties, you know, at the end. Um, we call people in to try and cover the shifts, um, contact other people and offer overtime, or, you know, then you try and close different sections or modify the menu, you know, but for those of us in healthcare, that's actually a really difficult thing because we don't always have a lot of auxiliary services we can close. We still have to feed our residents, um, you know, and I think that's the thing too. We can't always serve, you know, a, cheese, a cold cheese sandwich when stuff doesn't show up or, or staff doesn't show up. 
but where do we begin? How how do we conquer this challenge? And I kind of broke it down into a couple different buckets. So the first one is basically the hiring and the onboarding. You know, if we make a place, you know, our our work environment somewhere where people actually enjoy being, whether they enjoy working with the residents, they enjoy working with food, you know, if we make that a good environment that's welcoming to our employees, then they're more likely to recommend it to their friends or their family, others that they might know, and then they're also more likely to stay. But one of the challenges that we found is that, you know, obviously with, you know, the the system of the market, we lost a lot of good people in COVID for whatever reasons, whether we lost them completely or whether or not, you know, they they had to take care of family or now they're home with the kids. Lots of different things changed. So when you have people, sometimes we're getting people with, you know, little or no experience. So how do we train them if as managers, you're already doing 10 other things, lots of jobs. And so if we can help you with training, with onboarding. So one of the things, you know, that we've kind of focused on is how can we make your life easier for onboarding? Well, if we have videos that help you do recipes, if we have videos that help you follow the instructions on the box, because not everybody knows how to bake or not everybody knows how to cook. So if you can make those things easy where maybe you can scan it, watch it, and in less than a minute, that person can now feel comfortable. It's like, you know what? Okay, I think I can do it. You know, um, the training tools. I mentioned we actually have product handling guides for many categories of our products online. Um, those can be self-taught. So this way, a person on their phone could sit there, you know, on their lunch hour or how whatever works in your particular facility, you know, can watch the content, learn about products, learn about food handling, and then feel more comfortable when they get a task or doing setup in the dining room, you know, and even having mentorship among your employees, where I know a lot of times like, oh, go shadow so somebody, um, you know, but sometimes that's that's really hard to execute if everyone <laughs> is new or onboarding. So the last part too, I wanted to talk about because one of the things today, we obviously are covering CEUs. And so I know for some of your facilities and when I worked at hospitals, we had mandatory in-service. So every month we needed to do certain kinds of training. So if you have these bite-sized videos that you can access, this kind of training um, is something that you can actually show. It can help with menu extensions, line extensions, seasonal specials and even like substitution. So one of the videos that you're gonna see has one. So if your canned beverage supplement doesn't come in, you know, do you have another protein beverage recipe based on site? Cause it's really hard to make those last minute changes. And so that's actually one of the highlights of why we're here. Not only having less waste, but having training, making substitutions without having to run to the grocery store every time you need something. So in this next section, basically we're gonna talk about three separate things. Um, the chefs that we have today, Chef Gilles is gonna actually take us through the advantages of seasonal ingredients for pricing, for ease of menu rotations. This helps also increase your customer satisfaction scores, you know, by having fresh things in the rotation, but then not confusing the cooks because it's a simply an ingredient substitution. And so when you think about things like emergency menus and so forth, this plays right into that. When Chef Jesse joins us, she's going to talk about reducing waste, advanced prep, and even finger food menus. Because in healthcare, we have a very unique situation where, you know, we have to do a lot of different diets, you know, in our system, whether it's modified textures or, you know, uh, different, whatever, just low sodium, low fat, and so forth. And so it's just thinking about that. That's a lot more than just going to McDonald's and, you know, maybe their menu prep you know, so from a difficulty. So these videos, the intent is that you can actually either use them for in-service, that they provide you training, inspiration, um, and then that way it can also, all of them have um, with reducing labor and reducing waste. So with that, we're gonna go ahead and transition to the videos. It is about 42 minutes for the videos. You're going to see eight different videos, and then we have more available offline um, for you so that you can have a full year's in-service training available. And then we're gonna come back and open it up for questions. So with that, we're gonna turn it over to the videos. Thank you. So in this next section, the intent is that we're gonna try and give you some back of the house content that you can use either for onboarding or for in-service training. 
So this is going to be a series of several videos that you can either use in Singularity or you can use in a cluster based on your menu offerings. So then the first set, Chef Gilles is going to join us and he's going to talk about the price value equation of using seasonal ingredients. Then in there, it's also going to help raise your satisfaction scores by adding items into your existing inventory that can easily add some diversity to your menus. Let's go ahead and watch Chef Gilles. Hello. Today, let's talk about some locally grown vegetables and fruits that you can pair with items already on your menu. I have picked stra uh, strawberries and asparagus today because they are one of the first spring vegetable and fruit that you can get. One of the advantage of sourcing some locally, locally grown uh, fruit and vegetable is that you can usually get a better price and also you can advertise that to your patron, which is always a great selling point as well. Using these produce, we will be pairing them with croissants, our freezer to oven croissants, with some of the plain and some of the chocolate croissant as well. And one of the big advantage of using the seasonal vegetable and the product you already have on hand is that you can save on your food cost because usually produce that's locally grown can be uh, at, a, at a better price than if it's flown from really far away. So today we will be using freezer to oven croissants. I'm gonna grab them because we have one plain and one chocolate. All right. So right here in my right hand, you have the plain freezer to oven croissant. So all you have to do is take it from fr the freezer, put it on your sheet pan and bake it. And then right here in, uh, in front of me, you have the chocolate croissant, straight croissant. All you have to do as well is put it on the sheet pan and bake it. Of course, you can sell these two products as is, but let's kind of take them to do a little twist, do some dish with it, and make three recipes from each item, pairing it with our asparagus and strawberries, and let's make some delicious food today. All right, first, let's highlight our asparagus. Using our plain croissant, we will be making three different recipes. The first one is the strata, and then I'm gonna demonstrate the next two. The first one is going to be an asparagus steak croissant sandwich, and the second one will be an asparagus croissant egg benedict. So first step is we will be taking our freezer to oven plain croissant and slice them. I'll just make one of each for the purpose of this demonstration. And next, once you have them sliced open, for the steak sandwich, I will be taking uh, probably around six asparagus and I'll put them at the bottom of the croissant. I spread them so that they are all over. I will put a slice of provolone cheese next. You can use any cheese you like. And then I have some uh, caramelized red onion right here that I will uh, also put on top of the cheese. Moving on to the Eggs Benedict sandwich, starting with the same exact procedure, taking about six asparagus, putting them at the bottom. And then for this one, we will skip uh, the cheese and we will put some shoulder bacon instead. There you go. And next, I'm gonna move these two croissants on a sheet pan and I'm gonna put them in the oven to melt the cheese, toast the bread a little bit and also warm up the bacon. So let's grab the pan and go in the oven. All right, so it has been three to four minutes, I would say, and we left it in there just enough to melt the cheese, and you can see a little bit of browning, so perfect, nice and warm croissants. Now it's time to finish them up and serve them. So first, let's grab our steak sandwich. You have the nice warm asparagus, the cheese, and the onions, and then I'm gonna uh, add like three to four slices of flank steak that I already cut right here. That looks good. And then, super simple. All I'm gonna do is grab a dish. I'm gonna put the steak down there. I'm gonna drizzle a little bit of balsamic reduction on top to give it a little acidity. That goes really well with the asparagus. And then I'm gonna top it with the, bar, the top of our croissants. And there you have it, a beautiful steak sandwich. 
Next, let's finish up our eggs benedict. I'll grab my plate and then let's do the same by adding the bottom of our croissant right here. Then I'm gonna do one poached egg per sandwich. Remove all the excess water so that it doesn't make a big pool of water on your plate. And then I'm gonna top this one with one generous ladle of hollandaise sauce. That will really finish this dish nicely. There you go. Make sure you cover the entire egg. Beautiful, about two ounces. And then I'm gonna do the same as with the steak sandwich. I'm gonna put the top of our croissant to the side so that you will have just enough of the croissant for each bite, but you'll have the delicious bacon, asparagus, and everything else as well. So there you have it. A couple really simple recipes using the same oven method that you can serve at different daytime. Last but not least, let's talk about our croissant strata. So this item is great to reduce waste. Once you know that your croissants are not gonna make it, they're starting to become stale um, and you don't wanna waste or have any food waste, you just take all of them. What I like to do is I just dice them all up and then in the purpose of this dish and highlighting some of the seasonal ingredients, I took some of my asparagus, chopped them in smaller pieces and I also had uh, some peppers and onions left over from a faida uh, dish I had yesterday. So I sauteed all of that. I incorporated it with my croissant and some eggs and whole milk, low seasoning. And then all you have to do is put it in a hotel pan, bake it, and there you have it. Another way to use uh, the same ingredients and reduce your waste while increasing your profit. So there you go. Three very simple recipes highlighting local ingredients and using the same exact croissants. Doesn't get any easier and it does add some, some variety to your menu. All right, next up, strawberries. We will be making the three following recipes starting right here with a layered strawberry and cream chocolate croissant. In the middle, we will be doing a stuffed strawberry uh, chocolate croissant. And then right here to the right, we will be doing a uh, mint and strawberry shooter that's got layers of strawberry with mint, uh, some layers of chocolate croissant, and then we will top that up with a low whipped cream and balsamic reduction. So let's get started with this one in the middle because we have to do one uh, step first. We will take a jumbo muffin tin and spray uh, the cavities that you will use. And then what I did, is I took, there you go, I took some of the croissant, uh, chocolate croissant dough, and I let them sit at room temperature for a few minutes, uh, probably around an hour. Now they are soft and pliable, so I can grab them and I can put them, what I do is I simply kind of rotate them around and pinch them, and I put them right in the middle of my muffin tin. We'll do six of them, there you go. Whoops, as you can see, they're nice and fun. Whoops, there you go. Then lastly, here's one more. There you have it, we'll just do six. And the next step is very important because we want them to look flat. So what I'm going to do is I'll take a parchment paper, put it on top of the croissant, and then I'm gonna top it with a few sheet pan in order to avoid for them to raise as you bake them. So now you are ready to go. We'll put them in the oven. And in about uh, 18 to 23 minutes, they will be ready to uh, take out and then we'll need to let them cool before we fill them. All right, so now our beautiful chocolate croissants round were baked and they've had a chance to cool. So the next step is to take them and fill them. So obviously we're working with strawberries today because it's our seasonal ingredient, but you can fill them up with whatever you'd like. So right here I made a uh, strawberry jam and I put it in a piping bag and all I'm gonna do is poke a hole on the side and then I'm gonna fill it until I feel a little bit of resistance. There you go. And I can tell that it is nice, it's getting a little bit heavier, so it's definitely a sign 
that uh, you get the filling throughout and you can see it kind of burst back out a little bit. So that's perfect. And then it's up to you what you want to do next. You can dip it in chocolate, for example. But because strawberry and whipped cream go so well together, what I'm going to do, pipe a little bit of the whipped cream on top of the hole we created when we put some of the strawberry. You could garnish it with something else, but I kind of like the simple look. So now you have it. You can just enjoy it. It's got the nice uh, strawberry flavor in the middle, the chocolate croissant, and you can present those. Uh, side by side, for example, uh, as you served before you serve them. So there you have it, a strawberry stuffed chocolate croissant round. So next up, let's make our layered uh, strawberry chocolate croissants. So I uh, baked our straight uh, croissant right here and I sliced it. So super easy moving from now on. Uh, I'm going to take some of our homemade strawberry jam and put a nice good amount like a tablespoon at the bottom. There you go. Then I'm going to take some uh, whipped cream and pipe that on top of the strawberry. Beautiful. And then last but not least, we'll take some of our fresh strawberries that's just sliced. And I'm going to actually, I'll put this on the plate first. Because this is another uh, use of your croissants and this is kind of meant to be more of a dessert. So it's okay if it looks a little messy. Will be delicious. Some sliced strawberries. And then all you have to do is close it back up. And there you have it. A delicious chocolate croissant layered with strawberries and whipped cream. Next up, let's make our layered chocolate croissant and strawberry dessert. So doesn't get any easier. What I did is I took some chocolate croissant that we didn't sell this morning and I diced them up in smaller pieces that will fit in the glass. And then at the same time, I diced up some strawberries and I mixed them with a little touch of uh, honey and some mint. And then I let that sit in the cooler until all the flavor get together. So to build the dessert, it doesn't get any simpler. We take some of our strawberry and mint and start at the bottom about a couple tablespoons at the bottom. And then we go and we add about a quarter cup of our chocolate croissant pieces. And then we're going to add a little bit more, about one more tablespoon of the strawberries at the top. That way we know that it's going to add some of that delicious flavor on top of the croissant. And then to garnish it, I'm simply going to do some whipped cream as well. There you go. I'll add a little bit of uh, balsamic reduction. That goes great with strawberries. And then I'm going to take a little piece of mint. I don't like to put huge bunches of mint because it's not really pleasant to eat. But if you take some very small leaves and I add a couple of them, then it works really well uh, as um, it goes really well together as you take a bite of this dessert. So there you have it, a delicious strawberry and mint layered with chocolate croissant dessert. Very easy and another way to cross-utilize your seasonal ingredients with ingredients you already have in house. In this next section, Chef Jesse is going to show us how you can take a versatile flat sheet dough and turn it into edible silverware for your finger food menus. This is also going to give us a great format that we can utilize leftover ingredients as well as small quantities of ingredients for our center of the plate offerings. This is great because it also builds in the ability to prep ahead so that if you have call-offs or no-shows or even that you know famous day of Cook's Choice, this plays great into that. Let's check it out. Hello, today I wanted to talk about pie dough rounds being turned into flatbreads and this is a nice waste saving idea for any of those uh, ingredients that you want to reuse or repurpose. So I've got the uh, six inch pie round here. They come with a paper lining on top. And so it's just that easy. You simply peel this liner off before you bake them and then bake them. You get nice and golden brown and then you have a delightful flatbread base. So this can be hot, this can be served cold, Again, ready to go with different options that you have on hand 
reducing your waste because uh, you can come up with a creative menu item. Uh, maybe you put these at your grill station. And if you wanted to do a hot version of the components that are on the grill station, I will show you one of those. And then you could also have this maybe at your salad station as well and do some different cold examples. So we'll get into that in a minute. So first, let's show you this hot version. So I've just got a simple buffalo chicken flatbread that I want to show you. Um, so first, you're going to take your base, which right here is just a ranch dressing. This could be a blue cheese dressing too. And you're going to put two tablespoons down on that base of your pie dough that's been baked off and it's been cooled. And then you're just going to spread it out nice and evenly across that like so. Okay, so then I'm going to take my chicken. So again, if you've got grilled chicken at your grilled station that you want to utilize, uh, here would be a perfect way to do it. I just diced it up like so. And I'm just going to scoop about one ounce of that into a bowl here. Take some buffalo sauce. And it's about a tablespoon of that. And then I'm just going to mix this together real quickly. And then this just gets scattered on top of that dressing. You could put uh, cheese down first. You could put cheese down after like I'm doing. Either way. There is that. Okay. So that was again about... This is a one and a half ounce scoop of that and it is going into now one ounce of mozzarella cheese over the top. And again, use what you have on your grill station. This is just purely an example of what you could do. Really easy way again to repurpose those ingredients. So then this just gets uh, flashed in the oven until the cheese is melted. Everything's heated through to 165 or above. Um, and then you're refreshing that uh, pie dough round as well. And then you're going to hit it just for good measure with some sliced green onion or scallion. So that was the buffalo chicken flatbread assembly. So then I wanted to show you over here. That was the pre-baked version. Now I've got the baked version of that hot buffalo chicken flatbread. Right over here, garnish with the scallions. Again, you could uh, drizzle it with some more dressing over the top right before service if you wanted. And then I wanted to show you some other options over here that could be the cold versions that are maybe at your salad station or your dessert station. So we've got this uh, grilled vegetable one. So again, you've got leftover grilled vegetables at one of the stations. Why not put it on a flatbread? So here, the base is two ounces of hummus, just spread over like I did with this uh, dressing before. Two ounces spread, and then you beautifully arrange your grilled vegetables on top. It's about six ounces of grilled vegetables total. And then I just uh, sprinkled on some crumbled feta. It's about two teaspoons of crumbled feta. And then that's a delicious thing. Right before service, you hit it with a drizzle of balsamic glaze and done. A nice savory option. Uh, lastly, I want to show you the dessert option or even it could be a breakfast option. So this is a, a fresh fruit tart. So what I did was just took some vanilla pudding, two ounces of pudding on the base, spread it around like uh, evenly like I did before, and then you artfully arrange your fruit on top. So here I had some strawberries, I had some blueberries, again whatever you have on hand for berries works beautifully. Um, and then if you wanted to preserve the strawberries a little bit because you're going to let this sit a little longer, you just take some um, corn syrup if you want and just brush it over the strawberries to seal those in uh, with the slice side. So again, you've got two different options on your cold stations. These you could do uh, per order or you could do these ahead and let them sit in the cooler and then serve them. So then if you've got, again, a little bit of downtime for the the assembly in the morning that you want to knock these out, then they're ready to go uh, for your service. So there you go. You got three different options of flatbreads utilizing whatever ingredients that you have on hand. Don't waste anything. So I wanted to show you uh, some things that you can do when you have some downtime because I want you to take advantage of labor when you have it. So today we're going to be doing hand pies with these pie dough rounds. And uh, this is just the product here that I'll be showcasing. 
what I've got here is a variety of different fillings. So what I want you to remember is using what you have on hand. So if you are set up for a breakfast shift and then you're starting to break down your breakfast shift before you set up for lunch, uh, as long as your stuff has been handled safely uh, on the hotline, go ahead and set it into the walk-in or the cooler and get this chilling because the main thing for this hand pie thing is that you want, again, safe ingredients, don't waste this leftovers, um, use it to your advantage. So now that these items are chilled, uh, I wanna show you how to build an actual hand pie with what you have on hand. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you this breakfast version. So it's about a third of a cup of protein going into this one. So that is the eggs and the ham combined about a third a cup, right into the center of this one. And then I want about a tablespoon of cheese to go over that and just keep corralling it in the center. And then if you have vegetables of choice, about a teaspoon of onion and about a teaspoon of some green pepper. I want a little bit more green pepper in there, right into the middle. And then again, just bunch that up in the middle, grab your brush and you can do egg wash. You, I've got water here, either one works. And you're just brushing the outer rim of this to create a nice seal for when you fold it over. So fold it over with the paper on because that way you can uh, keep those ingredients intact without falling all over the place. And then give it a good pinch down with your fingers. To get everything ready, start peeling the paper back. Grab a fork and then begin crimping just like so. Making sure you're getting that nice seal. And if you've got ingredients that are kind of popping out on you, that's okay. Just try to tuck them back in with your finger and work your way around the dough just like that. Lastly, you want to make sure that you are venting this. So just give it a couple different vent holes with the paring knife. And there we go. So that's the hand pie right there that then I'm going to set aside. And then I want to talk to you about, okay, that's breakfast. That's great. Say you don't have any more scrambled eggs. Instead of scrambled eggs, why not throw in hash browns? So then again, using what you have on hand, pulling out the amount of the uh, pie dough that you think you can fill each of the ingredients in, uh, you know, don't let anything go to waste. So instead of this, perhaps you're swapping it with your hash browns, and then you can either do your other protein, which is about, again, I'd say a third of a cup of protein total. Uh, then with the starch, you can fill in that with, you know, a tablespoon to two tablespoons. Um, and then if you have, you don't have ham, but you've got sausage, or you've got bacon, again, use what you have. You've got it on your operation. Your staff happens to have some downtime between shifts. They're cleaning up. That's a great time for you to have them just knock out a few different hand pie versions. You put that in the freezer for later, and then you've got a special menu item. So perhaps it's a chef's choice. Uh, it's a special of the day. So then if you happen to be short staffed, then later you've got something in your back pocket that you can utilize uh, that is a low labor solution. So now let's go into the PM version. I'm going to do the same thing that I did here, but now this is a taco one. So I happen to have some uh, taco meat left from lunch service. So again, about a third of a cup of the protein right in the center of that hand pie, like so. And then again, about a tablespoon of cheese right on top of the meat. And you can keep it just as easy as that. You can put other vegetables in there if you want. If you have onions or if you have diced green chilies, that could go in there. If you have a little queso, you could toss the meat with some queso. Again, whatever works for you. I'm keeping it simple today. So again, I brush that water around there to create that nice edge. And I'm gonna fold this over like so. Kind of crimp down the edges with my fingers, peel back the paper, and then get ready to start crimping with my fork. So again, I'm getting a nice seal there while creating some texture. Gives it a nice look when it's finished baking. 
just like that. And again, don't forget your vent holes, like so. If you wanted to add one more for good measure, just to make it different than the breakfast hand pie, why not? All right, so now I just told you two different versions of the hand pies here. Uh, we've got the breakfast and the uh, lunch or dinner option. So then I wanted to show you some other options here for dessert. So if you happen to have uh, leftover pie filling in your inventory, uh, this happens to be cherry pie filling that we had left over, um, this one can be used as a dessert version of a hand pie. So again, don't let that go to waste. Uh, it's a very simple solution for any of that number 10 can that you've got left over. Um, it's about a two ounce scoop of the pie filling per pie dough round. Um, and then just like I showed you before, you just fold it over, you crimp it. This one, since there's the glaze on it, I happen to sprinkle on some uh, granulated sugar just to give it a little bit of dual texture um, and to add to that sweetness. And then it also gives me a flavor cue. So when these are in the freezer, I happen to know, oh, that's the sweet one because there's sugar on the top of it. Um, and it gives it a nice little uh, crunchy sheen too. So then moving down, I wanted to show you, this is the uh, taco one that we did. Uh, this is baked off. And as you can see, I happen to put some uh, shredded cheese on top of it just to give it a little different look. Um, and when you're baking these, the big thing to remember is that you want to make sure that your filling is at 165 degrees or above. Uh, so make sure you're temping them so that because you have these prepped in the freezer, everything's getting heated and you're keeping it food safe. So that is that PM version. I wanted to show you then uh, serve it with some sour cream or crema or salsa. Again, whatever you have on hand, just give it a nice little addition to the hand pie so that uh, people can dip it and customize it as they like. Uh, then on to breakfast here. So this was the breakfast hand pie I showed you earlier. That is the, the Denver hand pie version. And I, as you can see, I just did some uh, black pepper on the top. So again, a different flavor cue for it, knowing that it's savory versus sweet. Um, and then it just gives it a nice little finishing touch. So here I have it served with salsa, or even if you have any leftover sausage gravy, this would be a great thing to dip in the breakfast hand pie. And there you have it. Hello, so today I'm gonna to be talking about flatbread dippers. And I wanted to show you a way to utilize these pie dough rounds into various ways to turn it into a grab and go item. So before I launch into how easy this is, I wanted to show you if you happen to have pieces that are irregular, they happen to, to break for some reason, or you've got scraps of dough, somebody pulled uh, too much dough and it's been thawed, and instead of throwing it away, I wanted to show you a waste saving solution that these can then be uh, tossed with a seasoning of your choice and it can be turned into something else special. So again, don't throw this away. Let me show you here. You simply take the paper off, remove the paper if you need to, and take, uh, if you happen to have any broken pieces, you can pat them in like so. Whatever seasonings you have on hand, I happen to have cinnamon and sugar blend here, and then a no salt seasoning of your choice is a great one. And you take a tablespoon, or sorry, a teaspoon of that particular topping and you're just going to coat the top of it like this and again if this was the broken pieces you would do the same thing with your broken pieces just that easy now with the savory one same thing teaspoon of that over the top just like so And then you can either, again, if it's, if it's already in pieces, just bake it off like this, cut it into your desired shapes. So I'm just gonna show you this one, take a, a bench scraper or your knife, and you're just gonna simply cut this into quarters, just like that. This one, you can cut into quarters, you can cut it into eighths, whatever size of the dipper you want. And again, if you've got irregular shapes, think about ways you could use it. Maybe it's croutons on the salad bar. Maybe it's a uh, topping for your soup station. Again, these don't have to go to waste. They can be utilized in creative and different ways and make it fun and exciting. So there you go. So now these are done. 
simply place these on your pan and then these will get baked off and then you can uh, cool them, package them. They can be served that day or they could perhaps go into the freezer for later use and then you pull them when you know that you need them. So again, something you can have done in advance, ready to go or utilize for your grab and go station. So now I want to show you the way that you could potentially merchandise these as well. So here you've got them just in a cello bag. Uh, this is the cinnamon and sugar version here. Serve it with, uh, you know, vanilla pudding. It could be vanilla yogurt, could be vanilla icing. Uh, again, different ways that these could be merchandised. Maybe these are sitting uh, in the grab and go station near the uh, cash register. Something that an impulse buy could be there for your patrons. Uh, this savory version, this was the one that I showed you with that no salt seasoning. Again, these are really cool dippers with hummus. So I just have a little container of hummus there served with these. This is maybe set near your salad bar so people could pick these up as a side to their salad. Um, a really great way to utilize this product. And again, they don't have to know that it's pie dough. This can be, again, your flatbread dippers to go sweet or savory however you like it, using the seasonings you have on hand, letting nothing go to waste. In this last set, I'm going to demonstrate replacement beverage recipes. So when you have shortages on your prepared beverages um, that they don't come in, um, we're gonna show you an option there. And then I also want to highlight the power of yogurt, both in your hydration programs, as well as how you can use it in your modified texture menus. Hi, we all know how important hydration is with our residents and our patrons. And so one of the recipes that we want to do today is actually using a dairy-free yogurt to make a smoothie. Um, the thing here is one, we're removing the dairy allergen, which is common with smoothies. The next thing is it gives you the freedom to go ahead and incorporate small amounts of ingredients. So for example, like bananas, it's really hard to get bananas like perfect between green and when they start to turn brown. But if you put them in a smoothie, this is a perfect way that you can incorporate these into your um, inventory usage. The next thing, sometimes spinach starts to wilt. And so this is a great way. Just clean it, make sure there's no rotten spinach in there. Um, and then you can go ahead and add that to your mix. And then the same thing, we're going to actually use frozen mangoes today. But the point there is that you can actually take your fresh berries, your fresh fruit. And if you have too much at one time, wash it, freeze it, and then you can bring it back for smoothies. And that's great because then that acts as like the ice that helps to make it really cool and creamy when you blend it for your smoothies. So for a quarter batch of what we're gonna make today, we're using 12 ounces of yogurt, eight ounces of fruit, eight ounces of spinach, eight ounces of juice. And then depending on the size of your banana, be one medium or large banana. So now we're gonna go ahead and put our ingredients inside the blender. And it's okay if you have extra ripe bananas. They are great for this. And we'll add our yogurt. Okay, and we're gonna mix this on low for about one minute. And you'll take a look at it, see if you need to scrape it down. Sometimes, depending if your bananas aren't that ripe, you might have to scrape and then go ahead and blend one more time. Okay, so one minute on low. Okay, that looks great. Let's go ahead and portion this up. Okay, so this is a great way that you can also do a smoothie bowl. So if you have a cafeteria, doctor's lounge, whatever, um, this would be great. You can put additional toppings on it. Remember, if you're going to do it for your modified textures, you might need to strain it out depending on what you put in there. Um, but this four ounce serving is only 80 calories and it gives you a great dairy free option. So recapping for the quarter batch, we did 12 ounces of yogurt dairy-free yogurt to eight ounces of your vegetable to eight ounces of your fruit juice to eight ounces of your frozen fruit. Um, and then when you blend, oh, and one banana. 
Um, <laughs> and that makes your uh, vegan smoothie bowls. Um, if you're worried about your bananas getting too ripe, you can always blend your orange juice with your banana and freeze that part of it. And again, you can use that kind of like you would frozen fruit or ice um, to just add more volume to your smoothie. So that's one more option too. Um, hope you enjoy. And this is a great way to make a vegan smoothie, both for hydration pass and for your cafeterias. So today we're going to show you how to make protein smoothie shakes that you might find that sometimes if your order didn't come in, you might be missing some of your canned supplements. And so we wanna help you create some of those nourishments. So the first one we're gonna do today is a protein smoothie shake. It's done with whole milk yogurt. It's done with whole milk. It's done with peanut butter and with sweetened condensed milk. But yes, you can substitute a non-peanut butter. You can use sun butter or other if you want to. Um, the whole batch, the recipe is written for a half gallon of milk for a four pound bag of yogurt, one pound of peanut butter, and one can of the sweetened condensed milk. We're gonna make a quarter batch today. So we're making five servings. So we have one pound of milk. We have one pound of yogurt. We have four ounces of peanut butter and we have three and a half ounces of the sweetened condensed milk. So that's a quarter can. Okay, now we're gonna blend it on low speed for about one minute, and then we'll scrape it down just to make sure that the peanut butter gets incorporated. Now we're going to go ahead and portion it into our serving glasses. You can scale these or portion these on a scale. Otherwise, we're just going to eyeball the five and then we'll come back depending on how much is left in the blender. Okay, so with these servings, the nutrition is 350 calories for the eight ounce serving, and it has 12 grams of protein. Um, it has basically those same four core ingredients. But if you want to do other flavors, you have the option, you can use strawberry or blueberry yogurt, use whatever flavor yogurt you want. Just remember if you're using this for modified textures, that you want to have a yogurt that doesn't have solids in it, um, just so that you can account for that so that way like if you're going to go for a level four if you want to have additional flavors you could add a quarter cup of chocolate syrup you could add a quarter cup of blueberries you could add one to two tablespoons of coffee you could add one banana to the quarter batch you could add a quarter cup of strawberries so all of those would make great flavor extensions but did you know they also make great freezer pops and so this is one way that you can have smaller batches from a quality control that way you can actually put them in your freezer for 30 to 60 minutes if you're going to do it for regular beverage pass or it's really easy if you have any leftover put it in the freezer overnight and make it for snack tomorrow so just kind of to recap, that gives you the ability to have a different flavor every day, but using the same four base ingredients as your foundation. So again, the big batch was a pound of yogurt, or excuse me, one bag of yogurt, a half gallon of milk, one pound of peanut butter, and one can of the sweetened condensed milk. Today's quarter batch, we used one pound of milk, 
one pound of the yogurt, four ounces of peanut butter, and three and a half ounces of the sweetened condensed milk, which was the quarter can. So I, enjoy, I invite you to go ahead and play around with the different flavors and hopefully enjoy. Thank you. So hi, in this next recipe segment, we want to talk about, well, dessert mousse. And basically we're gonna make a yogurt mousse. Well, what would you use it for? So this would be great if you didn't, like say your, your frosting didn't come in, you ran out, or maybe you just wanna have like a lighter frosting on your desserts instead of having, you know, a more shortening based frosting. The other thing is, well, what if you need more uh, puree desserts? And so this is an option too. It, it's great because you can use it for, you know, regular population, general population, as well as using it for purees. The only thing that we call out is that you do have to be mindful of your solids that you're going to fold in. We're going to start out by making the basic most, which is just going to be equal parts by weight of a non-dairy topping and then your uh, basically your yogurt. Um, you're gonna whip those two together until it looks like mousse. And then at that point, you can either serve it. You can fold in uh, powdered drink mixes to flavor it. So if you're staying with the puree and you don't wanna have any solid at all, that's a great way that you can change the flavors up. But then this is also a perfect way that you can incorporate either trim from your desserts uh, for stales. You can uh, go ahead and fold in like crushed cookie pieces, muffins, cinnamon rolls, croissants, whatever. So then it's just gonna be about particle size. So let's go ahead and we're gonna get started and make the basic mousse. So the one that you see in the recipe is four pounds of non-dairy topping with four pounds of yogurt and 12 pounds, or excuse me, 12 ounces of crushed cookies. The basic mousse, we're actually gonna do an eighth batch. So we're doing eight ounces of non-dairy topping with eight ounces of yogurt. So we're gonna start with those two. And if you're doing a really big batch, yes, you can do use the machine mixer with a balloon whip. Works absolutely fine. Okay, you can see. The mousse holds its form. That's all the more that you have to mix it. The next part, so this is the one where if you want the plain mousse, you can use this like frosting, like buttercream, okay? But now we're gonna fold in our crushed cookie pieces. And you'll notice that cookies hydrate really well and then become soft and moist, so minced and moist. So this is what we're looking for. And so at this point, you can just scoop and portion it into your serving containers, okay? You can also pipe it, so your choice. These are great, and then if you want, you can even sprinkle it with more, you know, crushed pieces on the top. This is excellent too. So like if you ever do a cake and then you, you cut off the top layer so that you level it, use those crumbs. This is a perfect way that you can incorporate it. So I wanna go ahead and talk to you about, um, you know, if you're gonna use other baked goods from your bakery case in making like parfaits or layer cakes or other dessert shooters, okay? So we're gonna talk about the texture. So I'm gonna move this just a quick. So in this section, you see kind of an assortment of baked goods that you might have in your case. One of the things that I wanna point out to you, if you were doing modified textures, the skins in the blueberry muffins still count. So you wanna have plain muffins so that they don't have any solids or chunks or nuts. If you're doing general population, fair game. Go ahead and use it. You can go ahead and chop those up. You'll see that we actually did some samples in the cups below. I have like a strawberry mousse parfait with chopped blueberries. And I even did like some roasted strawberry fruits on top. So again, if your berries get bruised, throw them in the oven, roast them off. You got homemade jam, works perfect for this. Less sugar too. So let's go ahead and talk about a particle size. So you would think that if you have things like cinnamon rolls or croissants, they don't have any chunkies in them, right? But I want to caution you. So if we have, like I chopped the cinnamon roll here, but again, when we're thinking about the modified textures, we need to be able to smush it. It does not go between the, it did not go between the fork. And so that one's actually not gonna work. General population would be fine, but not for my modified textures because it's actually too gummy. 
So while that's a good problem to have if you're on a general population diet, for our modified textures, it just might not be a good thing. So next, I took a chocolate croissant, and in this one, I chopped it up first, and then I put it through the food processor, so that way I could grind it even finer, because I wanted to see you know, if I could get it almost to crumb size. But one of the things to call out again, because there's so many flaky layers in there, that as I'm pushing this around to check my particles, they're not all consistent sizes. Okay, that you do see that some of them, they don't, again, fit through the fork. Okay, and so while they're soft to the touch, they're not a consistent size. And we all know that's really important when we're doing our modified textures. So that way, if you need to um, have more consistent particle size, sometimes you need to dry it out more before you grind it. So then if it's too dry, you need to moisten it. So whether you add a slurry or you add some applesauce, that will help moisten the baked good crumbs. So that way, then they can be blended consistently back into the mousse. So now let's take you back to the dessert mousses, just so you can see some of the samples of the different textures that we did. We did the strawberry mousse, and that was with the drink mix, but we used that same core mousse, which was the equal parts by weight. So it was eight ounces of non-dairy topping and eight ounces of yogurt, and one packet of the drink mix that made strawberry. Behind that, you see the Oreo cookie mousse, or the cookies and cream mousse. That one, because they're crushed, the pieces are so small, they hydrate well. They do, in fact, press between the tines of the fork. The next one that you see, we actually did a roasted strawberry jam. Now, that one is great for regular diets, but because of the seeds, and the bulk of the, the strawberries, you cannot use that in your modified textures. Um, you would need to puree it and strain it to get all of the, the solids and the seeds out. That's something you have to worry about with the berries. Then we have the blueberry muffin with the vanilla mousse. And so that one, again, we have the skins and the blueberries. So you just need to be mindful which products you're serving with which textures. This last one, we did uh, from floor stock, we just did a vanilla cookie and put that in there. It hydrates very well. So that one's going to be soft to the touch and we'll go through the tines of the fork. And last but not least, feel free, you know, like if you have your coffee shop or your cafeteria, this is a great way that you can use all of the big pieces that didn't fit in your modified texture diets, that you can put those together, big pieces, lots of colors, lots of fruit compotes. So it's one more way that you can just create basically sales from stales and it gives you one more way that you can take that same core mousse recipe and utilize it for many different consumers. Hi everyone, thank you, thank you, thank you for hanging in there with us. Basically, we just wanted to go ahead and give you, you know, additional context for additional resources and let you know that we are here for you and um, want to help you with your challenges that you face each day. So whether that's labor shortages, reducing your waste, or, you know, basically just try and cope with supply chain issues, um, please look us up anywhere on the website with the uh, generalmillscf.com. Come visit us at the bellinstitute.com. Just to go ahead and let you see there's additional resources. So if you wanted to find any of the ingredients that you saw today, um, to have them on your emergency menus. Um, basically, just keeping, you know, a, a yogurt, a dough sheet, or even a dough piece in your inventory can frequently help you with a lot of your substitutions and your seasonal menus. So with that, I want to thank you, thank you, thank you so much for joining us for the webinar today. Um, please look to your inbox um, for the survey and the, C the CEU information will be sent to you. Um, and I'll turn it over to the rest of our presentation team in case there's anything that I forgot to go ahead and add to you. Thank you so much, Chef Sonia and all of our chef presenters today. Yes, please. Thank you so much. Uh, please do visit us for information on rebates, helpful marketing tools, videos, and new item launches. Um, thank you again for all your time today. Uh, this concludes today's program, and you may now disconnect. Thank you again for joining us today. Bye. Thank you.